Hi everybody, welcome to another installment of Conversations in Wire. My name is James Browning, I'm your host. Uh, I am a sales representative for the Soft Flex company. We are a jewelry wire manufacturer based out of Sonoma, California. And we do have a gallery if you would like to stop by if you're ever in our area. Um, today we're going to be having some fun with um, the Jesse James bead strand that they created specially for us for our great pumpkin kit. Um, Jesse James has a great selection of bead strands. So um, if you want to do this project with any of their other bead strands, you're more than welcome to. Um, we're going to be making a little spider. This is a cute, cute project, really fun. Um, and it's actually fairly simple once you get the hang of it. So we're gonna go over that today. And if we have time at the end, I may have an extra special project. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what we've decided to do is make this little tiny spider so you can kind of see them better. Um, we've got two beads that we need to pick out and it's all the rest of it's just wire. So it's a really simple project. We don't need much. Um, we're going to be using a Jesse James bead strand um, this one was created specially for the Great Pumpkin Kit that we designed here. Um, you can still get these for, I believe, $10.49 on our website, which is www.softflexcompany.com. Um, these are created specially for us by Jesse James Beads, um, but they have a huge selection of bead strands on their website. And their website will be linked below in the comments. I love their bead strands because they've got a huge selection of sizes of beads and everything is color coordinated so it makes projects really super easy to make. So I've actually chosen two beads from this selection for my project. So we've got our little head and our body. Now with this project you can create different sizes of spiders by changing the size of beads and then also changing the size of wire. For this project, we're going to be using 24 gauge. I'm using silver. You can change the color up depending upon your project. Um, and then for other tools, we're going to need um, either chain nose or bent nose pliers. We're going to need some round nose pliers just in case we need to make a better loop. Um, we also have the loop right tools, which I'm going to be using because I need a specific measurement on my tool, so we'll be looking at that first. Um, you can get these on our website if you don't have a pair. You can also use step nose uh, bail making pliers if you have those. We're going to need, of course, our nylon jaw tools for straightening our wire and a pair of cutters to get those wires off the spool. So let's go ahead. I've already taken off and straightened approximately three and a half feet of wire. So that's a lot of wire, um, but we want to at least get that much because you'll be surprised how much wire you use for this project. So I'm just gonna move these things out of my way. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the center of our project, or of our wire, I should say. So we're going to take this, match up our ends, and if you've seen my videos before, we're not going to fold the wire, we're just going to pull it so that it gets like a little V and then the wire will naturally curl back and give you your center point. So we're going to just kind of shrink this down a little bit because um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make this part of the spider first. So we're going to decide our bead is probably about six millimeters. So I'm going to make my hole or my loops about seven millimeters. And we're just going to make a double loop here. Basically, I'm just wrapping it around once and then I'm going to flip it and then take my wires back. So we end up wrapping it around twice and our wires are going to kind of point down because what I want to do is run my bead through. Um, and it's okay if you go off center, that's fine. It'll fix itself in the end. 
And then what I want to do on this bead, I've got uh, one finished end and one not finished end. So I'm going to aim that finished end towards the center, which is the big thing I just made. And we're going to try not to connect it to everything else on the table. There we go. See? Like that. All right. Now this is a kind of a tricky part. We need to make a little loop at the end so it kind of stays where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go to the end of my round nose here and just loop that and then I'm going to twist it, my tool, so I can loop it around the other way. And then I'm just going to tighten up my loops a little and feed this back through so I get a nice nice round loop. And then I'm going to take these wires. We're going to go back down the body. Oh, sorry. Before we do that, we're going to wrap this around the neck. We want to make sure that our loops are facing the same direction before we wrap. So we're going to take our wire. We're going to go around the neck once on one side and around on the other side so that it's basically a tied loop. Now we can go back through and form this up to be more of a circle and look better. There. Okay. Now we're going to take our wires and we're going to go back down along the sides of the spider. Okay, so we've got our wires feeding the right direction. Now what we want to do is I'm going to take one side of the wire and I'm going to feed it down gently and kind of take a moment to um, round your wire out so that it doesn't kink on you. Take your time, go slow. And we're going to wrap it around as close to the body as we can. So like that. And we're going to go one more through so it's wrapped around nice and tight. Okay. So now we've got one side connected. All right, now we're going to make our first leg. And I would say make it approximately, especially if we're going to make a different one, I would say um, one and a half times the body. Um, you can make it two to three times, but that gets you like really long legs. So if we're going for finger length, that's about a knuckle and a half, so let's go all the way out to the big knuckle. So we'll say this big. Okay, and we're just going to bend it right back down. You don't have to make a sharp bend at this point because we're going to play with those at the end. So just direct your, your wire back towards the circle at the middle, and we're going to put our wire back through. Remember to take your time. So it doesn't kink. And we're going to connect it with one, one of those wraps. If you can aim right, which I'm not doing so good right now. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now the second leg, just to make it look interesting, we're going to make it a little smaller. So about there. So this is our second leg. 
And since spiders have eight legs, we need to make two more on this side. The same way. And every time we make a leg, we come back through and loop it up. So this is how we are using all of that wire that we cut off. Okay, now the third leg needs to be the same size as that second leg. So we're just gonna bend it right there, right next to the next one. Okay, so see, we have three legs now. We're taking a moment. And connecting it. I hope I have enough wire. I may have not cut enough. I did not. Uh-oh. Well, I think we need to go back and change the size of our legs. This is going to be a bit of a project. But that's the cool thing about wire, is it's forgiving. So you can kind of start over. So that's the other thing about eyeballing. I did not, I do not like to measure for my projects. So sometimes I get myself into little problems like this, but then I get to use my imagination on how to figure out how to fix it. So if you mess up like this, just go back, grab your tool so you can hang on to it really well and just straighten out that wire. See? It's like we didn't even mess up to begin with. Okay. So those legs were too long. Didn't give us quite enough. So let's just make them a tad bit shorter. Let's go here. So this kind of be a stubby spider. Well, that's all right. He's still a valuable con valuable member of the spider community. The differently abled spider. <laughs> Oh goodness, the things we do to entertain ourselves. Okay. Remember, we're going through basically twice, so we have a full wrap in between each leg because that anchors the leg. I think that's the word I want to look, use. And you want to squish your wraps next to each other. So I'm not taking my time like I'm supposed to. I'm rushing, so I'm bending my wire a little bit. That's not good. Take your time. Okay, and I'm getting my middle part out of whack. Goodness. Okay, there. Now we're kind of back on track. All right, so we're going to make the second leg shorter than the first. And because we've been playing with this wire uh, a little bit too much, it's really stiff. So you're getting a lot of spring back. So we just have to be extra careful and take our time. Don't get frustrated with the wire. It's just being wire. Okay, all right, so now we've got leg two. 
and leg three, remember, is supposed to be the same size as leg two. All right. Now I know this kind of looks a little messy right now, but when we get it to the end, it will fix itself because we're gonna twist these legs so it'll make itself look neater, I promise. Okay, hopefully we have taken enough wire back by changing the length of our legs that we can finish this side. So the fourth leg is the same size as the first. All right, okay. And we're hooking that round again. Okay, so now we've got four legs, but we need a pincher. So we have one more little leg to make. Okay, so that side is done. So now we do the exact same thing on this side. And that first step was to go through and anchor the wire to start that first leg. Okay. It looks like I didn't make one of my legs long enough. I wonder if I can cheat this up a little bit. That's better. Sorry, I'm fiddling, I know. It's a problem. I should probably go to Fiddlers Anonymous. Okay. So now I want to make sure that this leg and this leg are about the same size, hopefully the same size. So uh, that's about the size of, so let's flip this way and bend it right there. Okay, so now we have our leg length right, and we're going to do the same thing, slowly taking it through, otherwise it will kink on you, and you will be frustrated, and you will throw the spider across the room. But don't do that. Like I always say, if you get frustrated during a project, go do something else. Just set it down, because art is supposed to be relaxing and fun. It's never meant to be frustrating. If it starts to get frustrating, that means that you are losing your patience and you need to take a break. And I have taken many breaks in my life because I may seem patient on film, but that is because you guys are seeing the after effects of all the projects I've done. So like with this one, I had to do it mm, probably about three or four times before I figured out exactly how to show you guys how to do this. So there was some times where I had to take a break. Okay, so we are working on leg three and I'm sure you're wondering but James when does the other bead come in well we have to get all our legs on first this is how we build our spider legs first well apparently butt first and then legs okay so 
third leg is the same size as the second. See, once you actually get it down, it goes pretty fast. Okay, and fourth leg, same as the first leg. And we're gonna wrap this around once. And we need our pincher. So about that size. So they're about the same size pincher. Okay, one more wrap around. Okay, so the end of this step should look like this. So we've got eight legs, two pinchers, and our wires are sticking out in front here. Now is when we add our bead. So we're just gonna thread the bead down the two. Okay, so now that the bead is on, we're going to bend it so that it kind of sits on top. And we're gonna take these wires and we're gonna go around the back. Okay, so it sits like that. And we're gonna twist these two wires together. Now, I'm not doing a very good twist because if you see, one wire is actually just sitting there and the other wire is wrapping around it. So this is not the best of twists, but really we're just kind of securing this bead down. So it's okay if it's not 100% perfect. And you don't have to finish it off all the way. I'm going to trim these off now. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to curl it And then I'm going to bend it down so that it kind of sits on the bottom and creates that bottom, kind of the bottom of the body. All right, so there we have the majority of the work. Okay, now we're going to make it look really cool. So we're going to take our chain nose pliers and we're going to grab onto the end um, your bent nose pliers, whatever you have. We're gonna take our leg and we're just going to twist it. Twist the body, hold your pliers straight. And take your time on this because we want this, the twist to be even. And we wanna kind of close up this area down here. So when you see your leg get to the point where you like it, that's good, I think. Then just do this for the rest. Okay, 
going to try and start with the, the leg flat. See how our messy, funky looking legs are creating a uniform look by twisting them all together. All is not lost. And we also need to pinch or twist our pinchers. So these a couple of good twists. Now we want to make sure we don't over twist because you will snap off your wires. So on these pinchers, just give them maybe like one or two little twists. Okay, almost there. Now I know that uh, a lot of people out there watching this may know how to make the Christmas spiders, which are very fun, but this is an entirely different method of making wire and beaded spiders. So if you don't happen to have a bunch of seed beads around, but you have a couple of orphan beads, this would be a fun product to use that way. And it's kind of spooky. So this time of year, a great time to make these products. Okay. So now we got to make the spider look more spidery. What we want to do first is we want to bend the legs up and we bend them basically at the little round part here. Just kind of get them up and then kind of, I would say at the top of that bead here, at the top of the head, make a really sharp bead bend. There we go. All right, and now we want to take these little pincher guys and kind of round them into each other so they look more like little mouthpieces. There. Now you can do one extra step if you want, if you manage to create cute little loops, you can take these and just bend them up. You don't have to, this is an optional step, but you can make little feet. Okay. We made a spider friend. Look how cute. <laughs> I love them. They make me happy. They're the only spiders in the world that I think are not squishable. So feel free to make as many of these as you want. And if you need the beads, you can always hit up us for these special um, the pumpkin beads, the great pumpkin strand. That's what this is. Or you can go to Jesse James Beads and find your own. Um, we have one more project that I would like to maybe quickly do. Uh, this is a spider web pendant. Um, I may just talk about this instead because there's a lot of different ways of making spiders or spider webs. Um, this one is um, you make your loop and then you do kind of a dream catcher thing where you have 
one, let's see, I did six, one, two, three, four, five, six threads. You know what? I'm just going to show you. Let's get some 18 gauge to make my loop. And I need something to make, let's straighten this out so it's nice and pretty first. Okay. Now, uh, if you have like a bracelet mandrel, this would work better. I do not. So what I'm gonna do is go make some gentle curves around this thing and then I'm going to open it back up to the size that I want. That's how I got that a little pointy in places but that just makes it more organic looking I guess. Okay, now we need to determine the part where we're going to make our bail. So let's make it right here. And I'm going to hold on to this part right here. Actually, I'm going to bend this. So 18 gauge is really stiff because it's the biggest one that we carry. And what I'm trying to do is wrap one side around the other. And we kind of want to grab both wires so we can do that where they're not moving, which is kind of difficult. So it helps to have two pairs of pliers. So that's good. Let's just end. And then I'm going to take this and squish down these wraps to make them closer and neater. Maybe. There we go. I'm going to clip off this one here. Now I'm using a coated wire, um, so what you want to make sure you are doing when you're using coated wire is to be gentle as much as you can with your tools because it will mar the wire. Um, if you have issues with marring your wire uh, when you're using tools, check your pressure um, because you don't want to be putting a, a bunch of pressure on your wire. Um, with your tool, but then also if you're still mastering your pressure, you can uh, utilize what's called tool magic. It's basically a um, nylon coating sort of thing, and uh, that will help protect your work. Now this is kind of a uh, little bit of a janky bail, but really I just wanted to show you how to do the, um, the weaving part. So um, pay more attention to this part and then making the circle. They actually have um, pre-made loops out there, which I dig quite a bit because that cuts off a lot of the guesswork when you're trying to make these um, okay. All right, let's be done with that. Um, since we're going to be wrapping this, we want our, our loop to be really solid, which is another reason why I like using pre-made loops because they're already work hardened. So I'm going to take a bench block and a nylon headed 
hammer. You can use a wire whacker if you have one of those. We sell those on our website. And I'm just going to um, make a lot of noise. What I'm doing is I'm work hardening this wire so it doesn't bend as easy. It will still bend because wire bends. But I'm using the nylon so I'm not changing the this um, shape of the wire. If I use the metal part, I would hammer the wire, it would go flat. So we're using the nylon so that it gives the force without as much of the squish. So see, that's much tighter. All right, get that out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to take some 28 gauge wire and we want it thin because you know spider webs are thin so I'm just going to take off about that mm, I would say six inches and I'm going to make three six inch pieces Oh no, I lost my end. There it is. It's like uh, spools of thread or tape where you just can't find the end. Okay, and there we go. So now we've got three of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend them in half so that I have six threads. I'm going to take that bend and I'm going to wrap it around the top. So that it comes back down. So now I've got my wires wrapped here. And to make it nice and together, we're going to twist it um, three times maybe. We don't want it too much because that takes a lot of the wire out and we want to have some to go on the sides. So we're going to separate all our wire wires out. So I like to have one coming straight down and then the rest are aimed off of that. So let's kind of put it at an angle because I think the angles look really work. Okay, so now we're just going to attach these by wrapping them around. And I like to take that first bend and create a sharp little um, crease there. So when wrapping tight, it's kind of like a three step process. So, and we only need to wrap a couple of times. So we'll do it again. We got one wrap, see how I do that corner thing there? And then I bend it through. And then I come up and I wrap it down again. So I'm not just whipping it around. I'm tugging it down so that it's going right against the wire that I'm wrapping it on. So that gets it nice and tight. Okay, so here we go down. And I'm doing four wraps. And then what I'm doing is I'm squishing them together so that they're nice and neat. Two more. We don't want these to move too much, so kind of get them as tight as you can. Hmm. 
overlapping my wraps here. That's not good. Well, let me just take this one out and try it again. Okay, there's no excuse for rushing yourself and messing up. If you're gonna do something, take your time and do it right, right? This is just a tough angle to work at, so give yourself some breaks if you need to. All right. Last one. Let's put it over here. All right, so we have designed the frame of our web. So now we just clip these off. And one of the things we always remember to do is to take some chain nose pliers or round nose and just fold in those pokey outy bits so that you are not injuring yourself in the future. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do a little sewing. Now, if you've ever watched the Viking knits, this is kind of the same sort of thing. We're going to anchor our thread. Uh, let's anchor right next to this. So I'm just gonna take it and wrap it two times careful you're not going through where you're not supposed to and i cut off a little bit of a troublesome piece you don't have to cut that big um especially if you're just beginning is this first First web piece is pretty short. Okay, I have one more wrap here. Squish my wrap together so it's nice and neat. And then I'm going to Go around. All right, this is bugging me. I'm going to take this off of me. So I do not need that much thread. So I'm going to get myself set up so that I'm coming at an angle to this thread. And I'm gonna go around and back through. So this is <laughs> this is not working the way that I wanted it to. Hold on. I 
kind of have to take your time with this one. Because what we want to do is we want to anchor that wrap around that thread. But we don't want to disturb the other thread. So then we go to the next one and we do the same thing. Go around the back, back through. It's always the first one that's hard to get started. And number 28 gauge work hardens really fast. So this is getting stiff and uncooperative. So we have to really be careful so we don't break our wire. So basically I'm just being a spider and I'm trying to go around all of my little web frame here. And because spiders are organic, if we mess up somehow, it's okay. Because it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to finish this off by wrapping this around the outside edge here. And I'm going to try and hide it next to the other knot so it's not just chilling out there. Okay, let's clip it off. And the next one. I have a kink in my wire. I'm working with 28 gauge wire. The longer that you make your wire, the more it's going to frustrate you. So unless you have to have a really long wire, do not cut them long. Okay. So I'm going to round the back and back through. Just watching to make sure that my wire doesn't kink. And the cool thing with, once you're through with making one of these, you could make a teeny tiny spider, like I just showed you, and have that chill out on your web that you just made. You can also use this uh, weaving technique to make dream catchers if you so desire to make those. And I'm going to tie this down with three wraps, I think is what I usually say. And squish your loops together so they're nice and neat. Whereas unfortunately your work is getting messed up. <laughs> All right. Let's do one more go around. 
And of course, you could probably put as many web frames or do as many of these wraps as you want to create your final piece. This is just basically technique. Um, so when you are creating, feel free to explore and change it up. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. So we're going around the back. See, it's kind of starting to look like a spider web. Just a drunken spider, maybe. Okay, come on. All right. And we'll just loop right around here at the top. Um, one of the other things you can do when you're making these is you could add beads and have this be a beaded web. So there's this has got lots of potential. Okay. All right, let's cut this off. And now is the time you can fiddle if you want cinch up your knots, straighten out your wires. So it was a little messy at the beginning, but we made it through, I think. I mean, my first one was probably a little bit better. This is really kind of a broken web. But that is the basic technique, and you can play with that and move along. I just wanted to kind of make a spider web to go with my spiders. So here we are, our finished projects, spider webs and spiders for our great Halloween time videos. So if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, thanks again for hanging out with me and you guys have a great day. If you guys make these spiders, please post them in our VIB group. I would love to see them. All right, have a great day. Bye.